Hi everyone. In the previous video we were looking at security management for unenrolled devices and I focused on Windows 10 and Windows 11 because that's what I had to hand. I realized I also had some servers so now we can take a look at um, security manage management for unmanaged devices for Windows Server. So let's look at the docs first. The docs say that this um, security config management feature which is currently in preview is available for Windows 10 professional uh, and above because it works for Windows 11 and uh, all of these other server operating systems and the use case there I guess is for when you have a, a, a domain joined server or maybe a hybrid joined server and you want to manage the configuration of Windows Defender, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint for example but you don't want to manage the device via Intune for obvious reasons because you can't and you don't have Config Manager so in this case, you might just want to apply some configuration for Defender for Endpoint and deploying that any other way than Intune is a little bit cumbersome. Intune is a very good way to deploy configuration for Defender for Endpoint. So that's where this feature comes in. We can apply just configuration for the Defender for Endpoint feature of the Windows, uh, of Windows Server by Intune policy, but not the rest of the MDM stuff. Let's jump in and take a look how we do that. So in my uh, Defender portal, we've got the OS platform. I've just ticked Windows Server Devices. Now, up front, I've done this prep so that you don't have to wait too long. There's a lot of waiting involved in this for device registration, device synchronization, that kind of thing. So just to speed things up, I, I've already configured this. And then we also need to go into onboarding and take a look at the options for onboarding. In the Windows 10 and Windows 11 case, I chose local script because that seemed appropriate. It was a workstation device. It wasn't a device that had any domain management or group policy management. But in my Windows Server 2019 deployment, which is the one I'm using today, I went for group policy. So I want to quickly go through how I configured that with you so that we can see how it works. I downloaded the onboarding package and I'll show you where I extracted that. In just a moment, we'll jump into the server and you can take a look at what you get from the onboarding package and you can see how I deployed it so that you can see how it works. Okay, so what you get when you download the onboarding package is a file, a zip file that contains these two things. So we've got the Defender ATP onboarding script and then you've got the optional params policy. This is uh, an ADMX policy that you can ingest into your central store or wherever you want to to do group policy management so i i ingested this in central store the idea is that you can use this on this optional parameters policy it, it really is optional you don't need to do this at all so you don't need to to ingest it at all if you don't want to but there are some policy settings you can use there the crux of it is that you need to deploy this this needs to be run on the computers and the suggestion in the, in the documentation is that you create an immediate run the scheduled task. So I'll show you how I did that. The other thing that we need to consider is that this share, you can see I've put it in a, a folder called C share. This needs to be accessible by all computers. In my case here, I, I was testing really, so I've, I've put it in a folder called share and I've made it available to, um, to all devices. So you probably wouldn't want to do that on a domain controller. You certainly wouldn't want to do that on a domain controller. Um, and I've made it available to all uh, all devices. So so everyone in this case has full control of the share and I've limited it down in security down to users so they only have read and execute on that folder. So they can essentially read and, and execute stuff that's in this folder, which is, is what I need. Let's jump into the group policy management and see what I've done. So we have a, um, a policy here in the group policy objects called Defender for Endpoint Onboarding dash servers. We'll jump into that and see what the settings we've got configured. So it's a computer configuration policy and it's a control panel setting and a scheduled task. And it's an immediate task from Windows 7 onwards called Defender for Endpoint Deployment. And this is essentially what it's, what it's set as. Uh, I don't think that's particularly readable, so I'm going to go into the edit and show you what it looks like when we're editing it. So you can see we've got a task set here and it's running as system and it'll run whether the user is logged in or not and with the highest privileges and you can see what the actions are. It's just to start this program. It's just going to run this onboarding script from the FQDN here. Nothing else is set in this so it's all just nice and clean 
And uh, yeah, so you set that as a immediate run task, and then you deploy it to your servers. In this case, I deployed it to all servers and all domain controllers and authenticated users in the filtering. So there's no filtering going on there. Essentially ran on my servers pretty much immediately and uh, did the thing that we wanted it to do. In this case, the thing that we wanted it to do was to run the onboarding package command uh, on my servers. And these servers were already hybrid joined. So they already had a, an identity in Azure AD through Azure AD Connect. So this was just onboarding them and Let's take a look at the portal to see what happened when we, when that took place. So first they went into the device inventory and you can see we've got DC01 and CM01 here and their status is onboarded. What we then did is we go into this and choose uh, the device manage tag and then add in MD-management so that they become managed by Intune. Same for DC01, MD management is the tag there. We just added it in as a tag just there. So after a few minutes, maybe maybe a bit longer, probably half an hour to an hour, I think, it then appeared in uh, Intune, and you can see it's set as CM01 is managed by MDE, as is my Windows 10 and the Windows 11 devices here. And uh, yeah, so they're, they're in Intune now, which is great. And they are also in uh, Azure AD, managed by MDM being in tune, which is, you know, not ideal, but that's pretty much the case. So that's all done. And then because with the previous testing that I was doing, I created a, a an endpoint security profile for um, antivirus. And you can see the one I created here is called security management for antivirus. And three devices have succeeded. Take a look what they are. They are the Windows 10 desktop and the Windows 11 desktop and CM01. DC01 doesn't appear to appear in that list. I'm not sure why, but let's take a look at what we set in this policy. So it was called security management for antivirus and the configuration settings that we chose are some random things. Um, I think I turned on uh, various things just to, to see if it was actually setting some things. But the main thing that we can test with is this excluded path that is set here. So C example excluded path was one of the paths that I excluded. So if we run over to our other machine and take a look at CM01 in Windows Security Center, you will see if I go into virus and threat protection settings, you can see it is managed by my admin, which is something that wouldn't happen unless you were managing your antivirus through some kind of policy. So real-time protection is on, cloud delivered protection is on. Jump into the exclusions, you can see we've got this example folder here that's been excluded. So that shows me that it's doing the thing I've asked it to do using the policy that I created in Intune to make changes to the device itself. I think that's quite powerful. I think it's it's a feature that needs more exploration to see how powerful this can be. You're essentially using the, the simplicity of Intune to deploy quite complex policy within Microsoft Defender for endpoints to servers that you don't manage within Intune. I'm keen to see how people use this and whether it's useful in your environment, please let me know in the comments. It's really good to hear from people in the comments. If you've liked this video, if it's been helpful, please hit the like button. I'll see you next time.